The question is, when do you listen to mom? Because we Somebody as boys, tight, don't they? We, we are a we are a boy household. Mom's been outnumbered for many never. years, and of course, we never listen. But every once in a while, there is a time where we're like, "Yeah, we should have listened to mom." So the question is, when is it that we need to listen to mom? Post always. injury always helps. It's always post injury, one hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and my response often is. Dumbass. Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Red Foreman from that 70s show. It all does. Over again. Yep. Only with that high pitched, squeaky voice. Yeah. Whiskey and cigars guard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at school, the um, school appropriate term that I use is stupid boy tricks. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like dumbass better. <laughs> I do yeah. too. But More it's succinct. the same, same idea. Stupid uh, boy tricks. I, hmm. Dad, what do you think is the most appropriate time? I always listen to mom. I do. I'm always listening. I'm always at least taking her counsel so that I can do whatever I'm going to do anyway. But yeah. I think about, you know, whatever, she, whatever warnings she throws out there. It's always helpful. She's I'll like say for check engine light. For, uh, yeah, a lot of but or from my, light. from my point of view, it's normally when we're doing something inherently dangerous anyway, and I've already thought it, but then somebody vocalized it and I go, yeah, you know, maybe I should just step back for a second and we'll just do this the right way because if somebody vocalized it, that means it really is unsafe. <laughs> so let's let's stop real quick and do what we're supposed to. Otherwise, I'd just hmm. do it and then we'd be like, well, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Stupid boy tricks. Could happen. All mm -hmm. the time. 24-7. Maybe. Yeah. And Mom it doesn't will... get better with age. Yeah, you're know. probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I found I myself... Know. I found myself up on the uh, roof of the barn oh, yeah. last week, Ooh, last yeah. Friday. Climbed up uh, the, the top 15, of the... 15, 16 feet above the ground? Yeah, the edge of it. It's 14-something at the edge, lower edge. So I, I threw a ladder up there. I was at work. And I crawl up to put the cap on the exhaust of the, you know, the stack of the furnace. Yeah. Uh, one of those hot dog furnaces, you know, we've got to... I noticed something was missing and it was the top of it for, you know, throwing some, keeping some weather out of there. So we had been into town and I couldn't find this thing anywhere. So the wind has blown it off and it's probably 40 miles to the east of us. And so I thought, well, I'll just buy another one, put it on there. I crawled up there with the ladder and. And guess what shoes he was wearing, Kalen? His, well, boots. His boots. Yeah. So yeah, why not get on a tin roof with slippery bottomed boots? Sure. Yeah. So as I climbed Tennis off the shoes ladder, were in the closet, and I had it nicely and secure. I'm sure. Down. I'm sure it was OSHA certified. No, for I'm sure. sure it was. And and climbed off of there, and as I stepped off to the side of the ladder and onto the roof, I went, "No, no, oh no!" It was it was fairly solid, but I was like, oh. "Yeah, this is this is going to be a little bit different getting down because Coming it, back it down. was yeah. a little bit slick." And mm. I'm using the screws of the tin to keep from sliding but i crawled up up there and you know could put this top on and slip my way back down and i was i was using my fingertips and my toe tips on my boots trying to keep from sliding and hit my worst problem was is the ladder's up and i, I didn't want to slide down and hit it and then sure you know, yeah chevy chase style yeah yeah because yeah. um if the ladder's gone then what, how am i going to hold myself up there yeah so i'm sitting there and, and the thought crossed my mind of something somebody said to me not all that long ago and says what's the what's the uh what's the cause of fatality for old men oh, <laughs> falling isn't it oh thinking they're still young men oh <laughs> so, yeah that's a good one yeah or as agile as young men and i'm not i'm not as agile as i used to be so i'm like ah crap so good old connie she was at her house her little her uh trader so i texted her say hey when you get a chance sometime would you come on over and do me a favor? Save me. 
and I wasn't going to, you know, if I had to wait for a while, I'd wait for a while while she's, she had some appointments on the phone and oh, about 15 minutes, she'd come over and she goes, what are you doing? You know? I said, well, I just, I just need you to stand on the ladder and put some weight against it so that I don't flop it over. And, and then I was able to crawl down, but so apparently I'm, I'm getting old because I'm starting to think of things that trying to do it the way that maybe I won't get as here's your problem. Here. I'm 30 years younger than you and I wouldn't have even done it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think there's that. that's a whole different conversation of who's a man and who's a weenie. I who, who listen, man, you don't, you don't, a little you bit don't like heights. Does it. You yeah. do not like heights. I don't like heights and I don't like slippery surfaces when I'm on a height. So I don't like either one of those two, but sometimes you just have to man up and do stuff. I probably would have gone about it a whole different way, but yeah, I, as soon as well, I got up there, I don't think you would have seen me anything other than a belly crawl up that thing and down that thing. That's for sure. Cause well, here's, here's what I, if, if one of you guys would have been around like you or Braden, you would have sent me, I would have had you in the tractor, just put me up with the bucket of the tractor up next to the yeah. roof. I'd step over. Oh yeah. That would have been, Oh, well, that's that it. Be oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's easy. He's yeah. cake. Sure. Yeah. But it wasn't the case. So anyway, it worked out. I didn't die. <laughs> Mom, what's, your, what's some of the things? Your mother is like things Jiminy things? Cricket on my shoulder all yeah, the time. Well, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mom, what's some of the sketchiest things you've seen us do and you've been like, eh, boys, let's let's dial it back here. Get on every every horse we're training. That's one. That's well, probably a good point. Some, yeah. some more so than others. But yeah. Um, those are scary times, though. Those first couple of swings over the back yeah. <laughs> can be yeah. make you pucker. <laughs> can be, yeah. Um, so well, there's been a couple of times like welding and uh, um, high high it. spots. I don't know if I've ever been unsafe with welding, honestly. Yeah. Well, no, no, I just mean your your balance is maybe not as good as it could be in the positions sure. to get oh, into. Oh, heights again, and, yeah. and high spots. Being on a ladder welding, yeah. things like that. Yeah, that's that's right. True. Um, I'd say most of the time that I've really thought about is we're welding heavy pipe overhead. Yeah. yeah. And it's barely sitting there. That's that's the most yeah potentially because, because it could fall and hurt somebody below or right. you could get pulled over with it yeah it's not just you there's a couple people that could yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. actually the bucket of the tractor was a One good thing to use because yeah. you had the grapple to help keep you in place so oh, yeah i mean you you got to do what you got to do but minimize the potential you know one of the things about injury me, honestly <laughs> Is when we burn something. I want it wet. Yeah, I don't. Like I don't want it. old oh, grass yeah. around. And your brother's like, "Dah, no problem." Yeah, you know, and he because he's done it how many times? But right. sure, yeah. fire just scares me to death that we're gonna, you know, not do start something, something we can't get yeah, stopped. Do something we can't get stopped. Exactly. I think the only thing difference from fire that scares me more than that is is something that we don't ever experience, and that's water. <laughs> the power of water. Yeah. Is, is pretty True. scary. I've seen it a couple of times. I'm like, man, you got to have a respect for that. And the people yeah, that go yeah. swimming, like during spring runoff, I'm just like, I don't understand what Not logic's going idea. through your head because you don't understand the hydraulics that's going on under there. <laughs> no, and I and I again, my former life, I used yeah. to I used to do lots of rescues and train for that kind of stuff. And it's you be, if you don't respect it, it'll probably kill you. True. you stay away from it because yeah, we have to put ourselves into into harm's way. In order to save somebody who didn't understand what they were getting into, yeah, so, it happened all the time. Yeah, yeah, and then the other thing too, I will say, I've seen a lot of. We're pretty good with equipment for the most part. I I think whenever we see something that we need to get out and do anything, we always shut it down or or yeah. we get it to an idle yeah. where it doesn't. It's not going to harm anybody. But the one thing that I always get a little concerned about is the auger, because sometimes we'll we are always inherently pulling dirt away from the auger to make sure that the hole gets clean. And sometimes we get a little too close and we're like, well, we should, uh, we should Back hold on there guys. Bit. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Cause I've seen some injuries where we're normally bad. doing that with a shovel and doing it on the, on the yeah. uphill side of that, where you're, you know, not pushing against something that's coming at you. You're doing it away from it or as it's going past you. So yeah. there's a, there's a little bit safer way to do it, but no, you're right. Bad things bad things can happen now mom from your perspective you deal with the cows just as much as we do especially during sorting for branding and and uh, shipping and so on and so forth 
But what are some of the times that you've seen us dealing with the cows and you've been like, boys, <laughs> let's not do that. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Well, tagging, probably. Yeah, probably tagging. That's a good one. Yeah. Because tagging. because your mamas are unpredictable. And yeah. Yeah. I had a cow push me over here a couple years ago yeah. that uh, she decided to turn around in the sh- kind of alleyway we had and she just ran past me really fast and I ended up on the ground because I just lost my balance and yeah um that get... that get that's worrisome mm-hmm. because they're so big and they might not be trying to hurt you at all they're just trying to get past you and they'll crush you but they can literally you, crush yeah you. you just can't get out of the way fast yeah. and they move fast it's amazing how quickly they can turn and all of a sudden you're in the middle of something you didn't anticipate yeah. they're talking about agility yeah yeah, you wouldn't think so. But your mom got to watch me get the crap kicked out of me when we were trying to mother that cow and calf up. Yeah, yeah he was right. yelling at me the whole time, too, about it. You think this is fun? I'm getting kicked? Well, no, but I'm on the other side of the fence. I don't know what Safely. to tell you. <laughs> Safely on the other side of the gate. <laughs> so I well, asked him, as a learning experience, I said... What'd you learn? Yeah. <laughs> well, I almost did. <laughs> did it a little different. Because that was kind of where I was going with this. I said, is there a better way or a better kind of gate that we could use so that mom can't kick and you can still help the calf, you know, to try to nurse? And he pretty much negated any suggestion. That, well, suggestion that anytime you're on one side of a gate and you stick your arm through it and a cow can kick you, now, yeah. now she's got leverage and a fulcrum. It'll break your arm yeah. so fast. Well, that's the reason why we changed we changed our tactics with branding horses a little bit. I mean, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Especially seeing you break your finger. Fingers that looks, yeah, that looks comfortable. So they're a little they're a little fatter and flatter. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I I was honestly just trying to be um proactive yeah. so that we don't have people kicked like Dad was getting kicked. And uh, um, again, the athleticism of a cow amazes you and they have a lot of force behind that kick a little bit yeah yeah he he was yelling a little bit he was sore sometimes mom's observances and warnings are a good thing to think about so it's always a good time to listen to mom oh even even if they are post-injury yeah even analysis afterwards is always spot on there's a good yeah after after action review on that one so with that we'll take that conversation and put it out to pasture